Greetings and welcome to Jeffco Films. Today we're going to review a movie from 1999 by director Philip Noyce, who did Blind Fury, Patriot Games, Clear and Present Danger, The Saint, and Soul with Angelina Jolie. This coincidentally also has her in it. So let's review The Bone Collector. Can I help you? I called before about turn of the century crime books. Around the corner. Help yourself. This movie starts out with Denzel Washington playing Lincoln Rhymes, a cop who's heading towards the scene talking to a detective, Tom Salido, played by Ed O'Neill. And when he's not scoring four touchdowns in the game, well, he's cheering on his buddy who's, you know, trying to find his killer. And he finds this cop's body down on the ground and some wreckage falls and paralyzes him. Because next we see him in a hospital bed in his own home and wheelchair. <laughs> Jump to a couple taking a cab from the airport and they both fall asleep but the wife does eventually wake up to see that he's going the wrong way and then they panic because they're being kidnapped. Lincoln's talking to his home nurse Thelma who's played by Queen Latifah and this might be her best role and I am including her new series, The Equalizer, where Denzel must have passed off his equalizing knowledge to Queen Latifah. We also have Richard Thompson played by Leland Orser who's doing tech repairs on his heart monitor and then Dr. Barry shows up. You can imagine how much sleep I've got in the past few days, considering your request. It's funny, since I made my decision, I've been sleeping like a baby. After all, you have survived. Beat all the odds. I want to make the final transition on my own terms. Sounds like he wants to die. Doc says he'll do it, but he puts it off to Sunday. Then we meet Officer Amelia Donahue, played by the lovely Angela Jolie. And she's getting ready for work. And her awkward boyfriend, Steve, is just plain awkward. Another slam bam, thank you ma'am, huh? My therapist tells me I might not be getting what I need out of this relationship. I, I care about you. You know that I can't make a commitment. She's on the job transferring the youth services soon, and then she gets a call and has to check it out, where she finds a hand sticking out from the ground. It's the dude from the cab. She also spots something on the tracks and has to stop a train. We see the killer still has the wife, and I thought she looked familiar. She's Olivia Birkelin. She did those Equinox episodes of Voyager. Not the only truck person in this either. Then she gets the kid that called 911 to go to the local store and buy her a camera so she can take some photos of the area. He has her chained up, but then we jump back to the crime scene where Detective Howard, played by Michael Rooker, comes in to be a dick to Amelia. We don't want to stop the train. Uh, yes, sir. I thought it might have disturbed the physical evidence. So why not shut down Grand Central while you have it? Hmm? Truman Donahue? Is that right? Donahue. Polly drops by Lincoln's to show him some crime scene photos and get his take on it, but he has a seizure and Thelma kicks him out. But when he wakes up, he does look at those photos. Amelia's at an orientation for inner city kids, but she gets pulled out and taken to Lincoln's. Lincoln insists that she be on the case because he thinks she has a keen eye from the photos that she took, even though she doesn't want to. Detective Ortiz shows up, played by Louise Gussman, and then Detective Howard shows up, still being a dick, but slightly more polite. And then Lincoln starts to put everything together because his mind is an encyclopedia. when the Woolworth building was being built. Workmen found the body of this rich industrialist, Talbot Soames. Polly and Amelia arrive at the crime scene and they have to get to the victim before 4 p.m. because the killer has pointed a steam pipe at her and it goes off at 4 p.m. They don't get there on time and they have to blast a hole because the pipes won't shut off. And then Amelia goes in with Lincoln on headset and he walks her through it. But she has a very human response to seeing the body, but he tries to calm her down. She goes around the scene collecting evidence and Detective Howard is listening in and at one point Lincoln wants her to saw off the victim's hands so that they can get cuff prints. But she has a line and I love how Detective Howard's just like shaking his head like, oh, I knew it, you sent a rookie in there who won't cut off people's hands. Ridiculous. The killer follows her home and we see a picture of her dad. He was a cop and he took his own life and she found his body and she starts to drink and then someone tries to open her door and when she investigates, well, no one's there but Easily the killer could have got in when she turned her back, but it's actually Detective Kenny standing outside her window. Hey, Get Solomon, what are you doing? Are you okay? Am I okay? What the fuck are you doing? Why's been trying to call you for hours? Kenny compliments her work today, and Lincoln does later. And the killer, he's prowling the bar for his next victim, and he finds one. I mean, driving a taxi sure does make it easy. 
Kenny gets a report about this kid going missing, and he thinks the killer has his next victim, also in an abandoned warehouse, one of many I would imagine in America, because that's where serial killers work. He's cutting him up pretty good because he needs a trophy. Then Richard the Tech Guy shows up, random, suspicious, mainly because I've seen him play a killer before. We go back and we see that this college kid, the rats are mm, attracted to the blood, and they start attacking him. Lincoln's gathering the evidence, figuring out the next location before he sends Amelia there, and he's pushing himself too much, and everybody's concerned, even Thelma. But the guy's gonna kill himself on Sunday, so... Amelia goes there, and she goes in alone. She shouldn't. I mean, the killer could easily be there. And she finds the guy covered in rats, and she shoots a rat, but he's quite dead. I'm going in. No, you're not. No, you're not! She finds more evidence left behind by the killer, but then Howard takes over and he kicks everybody out of Lincoln's, who's still looking over the evidence. And Howard says he has a fingerprint of the taxi driver with three priors, so they go over there and they find him dead, missing a finger. Well, there's your fingerprint. Amelia shows up at the Lincoln's to look over some old case files that Eddie dropped off, and then Howard shows up, being an asshole as always, so Thelma doesn't let him in, and Lincoln has a bad seizure. We also see the killer is picking up a grandpa and his granddaughter, but a cop stops them. Off. You're carrying a fare and your meter's not on it. Number two, your hack license is not public supplies. When Lincoln wakes, Polly calls him and tells him about the taxi incident. And he puts some evidence together to find an old crime story book that this is similar to. So Amelia goes to an old bookstore and finds a book called The Bone Collector. And all the crime scenes are right out of there. I mean, if you're a serial killer, that's pretty unoriginal. That's plagiarism. But we also see how the next victims are going to die. They're going to be strung up by the water. So she puts it together, finds the victims. The old guy's dead, but the little girl's still alive. She saved her. Lincoln tells her to look around the fuel tanks for more evidence, and she finds it. It looks like a police badge number. Howard tells Lincoln to shut up and get off the line, and then they try to arrest Amelia, but she's already off to the next clue into some old abandoned subway stations. And we find out the badge number was Lincoln's. Hey, what are you doing here? Well, if there's any good news out of this, at least Howard's been taken out too. It's Richard, and he's bringing up an old case file. You wrote an expert opinion. I've written thousands of opinions, Richard. Don't fucking tell me you don't remember Syracuse. They called it an investigation. It was a witch hunt. Richard's real name is Marcus Andrews, and Lincoln's report destroyed his life. I feel like some backstory really just got thrown in there. I mean, I think Richard should have been a lot more established than just, yeah, I'm the killer. You didn't suspect me, the suspicious guy that just kept showing up. Come on. Marcus is screwing with his machines. I guess he's going to try and make it look like an accident or something. But Lincoln uses his bed functions to knock him down and he bites him and draws some blood. <laughs> Just buying himself enough time for Amelia to show up and take him out. <laughs> then it's Christmas and Dr. Barry's there just hanging out and his sister shows up with her family and they weren't talking because he didn't want to talk to anybody because he was paralyzed. And Amelia shows up in a gorgeous dress. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Hi. Merry Christmas, Lincoln. Are they implying that they're going to become a thing? Also, it does appear that the assisted suicide is off the table. The end. This was actually a decent movie. There's room for it to be improved, but the cast is really good. There's actually a Lincoln Rhymes Hunt for the Bone Collector series that came out last year. Do me a favor, will you check and see if there's been any homicides in the last 12 months involving surgically removed flesh exposing bone? 
in the end, on the one hand, I enjoyed this movie. On the other hand, I'm kind of curious to check out the series because it's based on a book and it's compact so much in this movie. Jolie's character, there's not a lot to her. Uh, Rhyme's character is just a freaking genius and can figure anything out. It's almost too good. It'd be better to see them struggle with these things and, you know, take the time to figure stuff out. And the killer is just like, haha, it was me all along. Come on, guys. You'll go do better than that. Well, as always, thanks for watching.